welcome all of you to another session of the nitrogen family that's part three here we see the preparation of dinitrogen actually it was initially called as nitrogen but nowadays it is called as dinitrogen and in your textbook too it is preparation of dinitrogen now nobody asks you what is the preparation of dinitrogen or how nitrogen is prepared usually in board papers usually what is asked is complete the following reactions okay uh, and one more thing i want to add here the preparation of nitrogen commercially we have studied a part of it in the ninth class where it is prepared commercially by liquefaction and fractional distillation of air so its boiling point is 772k 77.2k i'm sorry boiling point is 77.2k so what we do is we will be cooling the gas and then it is liquefied and then it is fractionally distilled out okay when the fractional distillation is done different fractions of air distills out in that nitrogen comes out before oxygen so the boiling point is about 77.2k okay so that is how the pre uh, nitrogen is prepared commercially now usually um, in lab preparations we have two methods and it is usually asked as complete the following reaction that's what i told then lab preparation nh4cl see aqueous solution of ammonium chloride is reacted with aqueous solution of ammonia um, i mean sodium nitrite so ammonium chloride aqueous plus sodium nitrite aqueous okay so what is the reaction see here n and n dinitrogen comes out then nacl comes out nacl i have shown you i have drawn here how nacl is coming out so if you can write it like this and take out nacl then you will not forget see n and n2 that is n2 comes out n and n here nacl so small amounts of no nitric oxide and hno3 are also produced in this reaction but they and they are removed by passing the gas through aqueous h2so4 that is sulfuric acid containing potassium dichromate okay so what is usually asked nh4cl aqueous will be given plus nano2 aqueous and then you will be asked to complete the reaction so then suddenly you should remember that it is actually the preparation of nitrogen i hope you understood we pass on to the next one that is stable volcano reaction here this is a this is a very beautiful reaction so you can see this in the internet too if you just um, you know several videos are there showing the thermal decomposition of ammonium dichromate it is one way of preparing nitrogen in your textbook not much is told about the uh um, uh about the beauty of the reaction or anything but it is usually commonly called as table volcano reaction if you just search for the thermal decomposition of ammonium dichromate you can see a wonderful volcano erupting out from a uh, uh from uh, uh the orange crystals so ammonium dichromate is usually seen as orange crystals i have put it in orange too here the writing itself is an orange so you can remember recollect okay for that reason orange crystals of ammonium uh, dichromate when it is heated at a, at an um, at 160 degree 168 degree celsius to 178 degree celsius it's approximate okay then you get the, it is a uh, thermal decomposition okay because we are heating it we get n2 n2 will come out n2 from here will come out then uh, see a4 a4 into 2 that is 8h2 isn't it and o is here so here we will get 4h2o and cr2o3 okay so this is how the reaction proceeds this is thermal decomposition of ammonium dichromate so this reaction also we will have to complete so what are the products formed when ammon orange crystals of ammonium dichromate uh, degrade it is what is it nitrogen comes out and also uh, chromium trioxide and uh, h2o water delta h is minus 429 plus or minus 3 mm, and this uh, in kilo calories so how can very pure now you can see a box here which is written here very pure nitrogen prepared by thermal decomposition of sodium or barium azide so it is there in your textbook and one time it was asked 
as to how can we prepare very pure nitrogen dinitrogen okay so it is prepared by the thermal decomposition of sodium or barium azide okay so azide what is um, azide is n3 barium 2 azide n3 okay and uh, that is uh, uh, and it is when it is heated we get barium plus uh, 3 n2 okay so this is barium azide decomposition giving us pure dinitrogen the dinitrogen produced here is very pure now um, i have written here usually this is not asked um, you know in that form it is usually asked what happens when barium azide is decomposed you can see that when barium azide decomposes we have seen this reaction then what happens when sodium azide is decomposed that too comes in this part but it is not mentioned there in your textbook but you you have to learn it okay so it is the same it's the same thing happens when it is decomposed you know dinitrogen comes out and it is in the case of accidents air bags bags are inflated isn't it so instead of that we have this sodium azide and it is used for uh, in sodium azide is used in air bags when accidents happen it is inflated usually due to this particular reaction so these are the way uh, ways by which nitrogen can be prepared so all the ways by which nitrogen can be prepared we have studied and if you are asked for, for the preparation of very pure dinitrogen then you have to put in this reaction otherwise these reactions lab preparations these are the ones included and for commercial preparation this is the one included okay now we deal with the properties of nitrogen nitrogen is a colorless odorless tasteless non toxic gas so that's the physical properties xss2 isotopes n14 and n15 and it is sparingly soluble in water so that's all about the properties uh, i mean the physical properties now we come to the chemical properties see dinitrogen is rather inert at room temperature because of high bond enthalpy of the n triple bond n okay so this we have already told about nitrogen Uh, when I had discussed about nitrogen itself, I had told you. Now this is the reason. A question might be asked: What is the reason behind the inert nature of dinitrogen? It is there in your book, and you have to write it down in your notes, as I told you. I'll be uh, telling you to write it down in your notebook because that question is there in your text. Okay, reaction of nitrogen. Now we'll see the reaction of nitrogen. Even though it's highly inert at higher temperatures, it reacts with metals. Okay, lithium. Nice. Uh, it reacts with lithium and form uh, with nitrogen. Lithium uh, reacts with nitrogen to form lithium nitride. Uh, lithium atomic now. I mean, lithium um, valency is one. Nitride valency three. Magnesium. Magnesium plus nitrogen gives magnesium nitride. Magnesium valency two and nitrogen valency. I mean, nitride valency three. So that is the reaction. So reaction of nitrogen with metals. Then we have reaction of nitrogen with hydrogen and oxygen. So nitrogen plus um, hydrogen. We know that nitrogen and hydrogen reacts to form ammonia. That reaction we are going to study in detail. You have already studied it. Haber process. It's a very industrially important reaction. So the conditions therein are very important. So the catalyst is a finely divided iron. Promoter is molybdenum. Temperature seven twenty three to seven seventy seven K, and pressure of two hundred to A two hundred atmospheres. Okay, so this is how ammonium is prepared. We will be studying this Haber. This is called as Haber process, and we will be studying about this in detail in the next slides, coming slides. Now, nitrogen also reacts with oxygen at very high temperatures at two thousand K to form nitric oxide. Okay, so these are the reactions which are very important in this case. It is the reaction with the nitrogen. Okay, now we deal with the uses of dinitrogen. You, uh, as it is, I have told you just now that ammonia is manufactured by uh, the uh, reaction between uh, dinitrogen and uh, hydrogen. Okay, so it is the primary importance of primary use of dinitrogen that is manufacture of ammonia and other nitrogen containing chemicals like calcium cyanamide. Then it also finds use where an inert atmosphere is required in iron and steel industry. Iron, uh, carbon, I mean, and uh, uh, oxygen is uh, not required. So in such cases, uh, where uh, an inert atmosphere is needed, we use dinitrogen. Uh, and you are uh, familiar, I, I mean, uh, inert diluent for reactive chemicals. Yes, it acts as a 
diluent for uh, reactive chemicals. Then liquid nitrogen is used as a refrigerant to preserve biological materials, food items and, its, and in cryosurgery. So in food items we have studied in order to prevent rancidity, uh, the oxidation of the fat, uh, fats and oils in uh, uh, chips and all we will be using, uh, we, we will be impregnating the uh, bags, I mean the chip bags with the, uh, nitrogen. Uh, so in cryosurgery also it is used because the temperature, uh, you know, because of the lower temperature attained, um, uh, we can use it as a, uh, use it in cryosurgery and also for the preservation of biological materials. Then uh, you might have these days in the tire also, in tires, in filling up tires also it is used, dinitrogen is used. So the tire pressure remains stable at changing temperatures if we use dinitrogen instead of uh, air. Air as it is contains about 78% of nitrogen, you know that. And uh, water vapor is also there. So water vapor will actually uh, uh, get the tire rims getting rust, I mean, uh, tire rims rusted and all. Uh, so in order to prevent that and also as a, uh, you know, in a race car and all the car tires get heated up due to, uh, due to friction. So uh, this uh, uh, change in temperature causes explosion of the tires. Now this can be uh, to um, an extent prevent it by uh, using uh, nitrogen to fill up your tires. So and uh, water vapor if it is less uh, that can prevent rusting of the um, tire rims too. So that's about the uses of dye nitrogen. So dear students here you can see two questions example 7-3 write the reaction of thermal decomposition of sodium azide. We have already written it now you have to write it in your notebook thermal decomposition of azide. Uh, gives dinitrogen okay it's in, in its pure form we get dinitrogen you have to write the equation equation 2 is very important and now the question based on that inert uh, question uh, I mean in text question one, one, uh, one is there that is why is nitrogen less reactive at room temperature or why is dinitrogen uh, inert okay so that is because of the high bond enthalpy of triple bonded nitrogen atoms n2 formed by the triple bond i hope you understand uh, and um, you do it as a homework put it in your notebook uh, while you are making notes you have to put in these questions too uh, you will be uh, uh, told to write example questions and also the in text questions now that um, as we have finished with nitrogen dinitrogen we come to the Compounds of nitrogen in that I told you we have to discuss about ammonia preparation of ammonia which is a hydride of nitrogen and so many things here bond angle and what happens and everything is explained we have already gone through it so I am not again explaining it uh, and uh, please focus on this side of the slide. Now in atmosphere it is found uh, by it is formed by the decay what is formed ammonia is formed by the decay of urea. Okay, decay of nitrogen is organic matter. Okay, this is urea, NH2CO, NH2 is urea and it is, uh, you know, de I mean, uh, when it is, uh, uh, when it is uh, present, I mean, decayed, um, okay, this is, uh, this urea will be decayed to, um, first ammonium carbonate will be formed and then ammonium carbonate splits into ammonia plus H2O plus CO2. So uh, you might have, uh, uh, you might have, uh, you know, uh, realized this pungent order of ammonia uh, when you, uh, when you, uh, you know, um, see that the decaying of not, uh, you know, when you see that there is decaying of nitrogenous organic matter. So that is one uh, way by which ammonia is pre is produced in the atmosphere. In your um, textbook also, it is given. Uh, ammonia is present in small quantities in air and soil where it is formed by the decay of nitrogenous organic matter as that is containing urea. Now this is urea. Now on a small scale uh, ammonia is obtained from ammonium salts which decompose when treated with caustic soda or lime. That means with an alkali we are going to treat um, uh, the ammonium chloride. Okay ammonium chloride ammonium salts. See you can see it here. Uh, we, we, here we have written, please write it down, ammonium, clo ammonium chloride plus calcium hydroxide, you know what it is, isn't it? It is lying, calcium hydroxide will give us um, ammonia plus water plus calcium chloride. Now calcium and chloride, see calcium chloride comes out, then ammonia NH3 comes out and the remaining that is H2O comes out, okay? 
So when you balance the chemical reaction, it will be this one. Okay. So it's very easy to balance. See, NH4 is coming out as NH3. See, and then one uh, of the hydrogen goes with this one. That is H2O will be formed. Okay. And then CaCl2, Ca and Cl, CaCl2 will be formed. So we take this ammonium chloride and react with calcium hydroxide. We get ammonia, water and calcium chloride. Now, if we take ammonium sulfate, that also can uh, give us you have to treat with ammon uh, sodium hydroxide that also can give us uh, the uh, give us ammonia so nh3 uh, plus uh, 2h2o plus na2so4 now on a large scale uh, you know no, on a large scale you, uh, you have uh, while we are trying to prepare ammonia we have to prepare it by the haber process so you have already studied about lee chatelier's principle the lee chatelier's principle states that Whenever there is a change in the equilibrium of a particular reaction, then the re, uh, then the uh, then the equilibrium. I mean, when uh, then the uh, reaction will proceed in such a way as to nullify the effect of that particular change. So uh, here you can see that N two plus three H two H two gives two N H three when we balance the chemical reaction. Understood. So you can see that four moles reacting to form two moles. Okay. So whenever there is a pressure, you know, increase in pressure, then naturally it will try to reduce the volume and the forward reaction will happen. So this is an exothermic reaction. So low temperature is preferable, favorable. Okay. And when pressure is increased, the reaction, uh, the pressure is increased, the reaction proceeds in that direction where the moles are less. So high pressure is preferred. Now, what is the pressure? That condition is very important. 200 into 10 raised to 5 pascals or we can say that 200 atmospheres and a temperature as high as 700 K is preferred. A catalyst iron with small amounts of K2O and Al2O3 favors the formation of ammonia. Initially, it was this um, de finely divided um, uh, iron with the molybdenum as a promoter that was used so that that was what i told in the earlier slide but nowadays it is being replaced by iron with small amounts of k2o and al2o3 which is favorable for the formation of ammonia now this is how we have to prepare the uh, this is how uh, the haber process is done okay and uh, as it is the hydrogen and you know in your book it is given that the hydrogen you can see see, see the you know this preparation here uh, here the uh, this um, uh, this hydrogen and um, hydrogen uh, and nitrogen is passed in a compress to a compressor having uh, so much of a, um, of a pressure okay 200 into 10 raised to 5 mega uh, i mean pascals means it is 20 mega pascal okay and then it is uh, uh, you know passed through a uh, to, through a catalyst you can see the catalyst here and then it is um, you know liquid ammonia comes out and hydrogen is um, hydrogen and also uh, nitrogen combines to form uh, you know uh, this liquid ammonia you can see that here this is the flowchart for the manufacture of ammonia so that is how ammonia is prepared there is another preparation method for uh, ammonia by the hydrolysis of cyanamide okay cyanamide uh, that is um, we have we are taking calcium cyanamide and then we are reacting with water you know it's just hydrolysis then we get ammonia and calcium carbonate now this is also a preparation which was mentioned in the earlier textbooks but nowadays it is not seen in the in CRT textbook but then it is also of importance because sometimes you will be asked what happens if the there is hydrolysis of uh, calcium cyanamide done what will be the gas produced so it will be NH3 I hope you understood now we go on to the physical properties of ammonia it is a colorless gas with characteristic pungent order it is highly soluble in water one volume of water dissolves almost 1300 volumes of ammonia at zero degree celsius and one atmospheric pressure the high solubility is due to the hydrogen bonding its aqueous solution is basic in nature nh3 plus h2o you can see nh4 oh and then you can split it up in nh4 plus and oh minus ions which makes the ammonia solution basic now i'm not going into the you know the structural details of ammonia because you already know it's sp3 hybridized nitrogen 
and n s three and due to the presence of lone pair of electrons, its structure is permeable with a bond angle of one zero seven point eight degrees due to the lone pair lone lone pair bond pair repulsion. You know all those things, so I'm not going to the details of that because we've already done it. So now, uh, since N S three gas was produced, N S three cannot be dried. Now, it is um, having some amount of water vapor with it, and it cannot be dried using concentrated sulfuric acid, P two O five, calcium chloride, because it. Uh, you know why? Because it reacts with them. So that is what we. Uh, that is what the examiner is trying to find out whether you know that it will react. Why? Because it is basic in nature. N S three as it is, it is basic in nature. So it cannot be dried in aqueous solutions or in the presence of water vapor. It acts as a base, so it cannot be dried using an acid. See, a reaction will happen, and a salt will be produced. See, N H three plus H two S O four gives N H four two S O four, and N O two N H two O plus N H three plus P two O five gives N F phosphate. Ammonium phosphate will be formed. Calcium chloride. And NH three, we will get calcium uh, NH three, and then uh, you know add it with NH three. So calcium chloride added with NH three, we will get. So what is actually used for drying? So calcium, a quick line, calcium hydroxide is used to dry it. Being both bases, NH three can't react, so this reaction won't happen, and then the water mole uh, water can be absorbed by this quick line, calcium hydroxide. I hope you understood. Now this is a, a tricky question. Sometimes it is being asked as to why NH three cannot be dried using concentrated sulfuric acid is a um, is a common question. And uh, uh, you know uh, we will not be able to find out the reason uh, suddenly when it is asked like that. So this keep in mind. It is just because it acts as a base. It cannot be dried using concentrated sulfuric acid because it will react and form ammonium sulfate. Okay. Now we pass on to the chemical properties of ammonia. Uh, usually, chemical properties are not as uh, are asked as such as to what are the chemical properties of ammonia like that. The questions often are put like this: How does ammonia precipitate hydroxides from metal salts? So we are taking two metal salts here: zinc sulfate and iron chloride. Okay. Now ZnSO4 uh, is reacting with. Ammonia. So ammonia, as aqueous solution, is present as NH4OH, isn't it? So we will put NH4OH. Now, what happens is that NH4SO4 comes out. NH4 twice SO4, that is ammonium sulfate, comes out, and a zinc hydroxide comes out as a white precipitate. Now, what was our question? How does ammonia precipitate hydroxides from the metal salts? So this is how it precipitates. Okay, so it reacts with this one and forms ammonium sulfate. See, zinc sulfate is a metal salt that we have taken to demonstrate this particular question to re uh, to uh, react. Okay, zinc sulfate. I mean, zinc sulfate was taken. It was reacted with NH four O H. That is ammonium hydroxide, and we got a white precipitate of zinc hydroxide. Okay, and plus uh, then ammonium sulfate. I hope you understood. Now we pass on to the next one. That is FeCl three. FeCl three plus ammonium hydroxide NH four OH gives a brown precipitate. That is a hydrated oxide is formed. See what is it formed? Hydrated oxide is formed. Actually, it is um, iron hydroxide only. Okay, but how is it formed? It is formed as a hydrated oxide. Now this is an oxide of iron, and it is hydrated. That is, X H two O molecules are present in it. I hope you understood. Fe two O three X H two O is formed, and it is a brown precipitate. Okay, and N H four C L is formed. Ammonium chloride is formed. Okay, so this is how we are going to write the. Precipitation reaction of ammonia. How does ammonia precipitate hydroxides from metal salts? Okay, sometimes it is precipitated as a hydroxide itself, and sometimes as a hydrated oxide. Okay, so that is water molecule is attached as X H two O. So this question is particularly asked sometimes in the case of the chemical properties in connection with the chemical properties of ammonia. With another important question, it is present in the same slide, uh, but I could not explain it in the next and the, the other one yeah, because it needs a, a lot of explanation. Okay, now this question itself is um, is uh, asked in different ways. Why does NH three act as a Lewy base, or as a complexing agent, or how does ammonia react with Cu two plus A or Ag plus? 
और हाउ कैन ट्रांसिशन मेटल्स बी डिटेक्टेड विद अमोनिया now these are all of the same kind these are all the same question asked in different ways okay in in from the part of transition metals also this can be asked then how from the uh, from the point of view of coordinating compounds it can be asked complexing agent now it can be asked also from the point of view of a lewy base or in the chemical properties of ammonia so in particular this question is quite quite important okay now why does ammonia act as a lewy base okay now we will take for example copper okay now copper is a transition metal you know copper is a transition metal silver is a transition metal okay so we are going to take copper copper 2 plus it is light blue in color i have put that in light blue only i don't know whether you can recognize it in the video but it is light blue in color it is an aqua solution of copper cu2 plus okay and then we are going to take dissolve it in aqueous ammonia now when ammonia is taken you know this lone pair of electrons here this lone pair of electrons will be given to this copper understood copper has several vacant d orbitals and into that this ammonia is going to supply its uh, electrons so a coordinate bond is formed okay we have not studied this coordinate kind of co coordinate kind of bond because we have studied covalent bonds ionic bonds and all but this is a covalent bond that is i mean a coordinate bond that is formed i hope you understood now this coordinate bond is formed by the shifting of this lone pair of electrons to the orbital of this one understood and a complex is formed okay a coordination compound is formed see that there cu will get attached to nh3 how many nh3 are there four nh3 are there isn't it four of these nh3 get uh, you know come uh, gives uh, its electrons to this cu lone pair of electrons to cu and a complex is formed with the, uh, the overall charge of plus 2 and it is of deep blue color so you can make out this is copper that is there because light blue it was now it a uh, deep blue complex is formed and uh, this here we can see that nh3 is acting as a um, complexing agent okay tetra ammonium copper 2 complex is formed here all the with silver also the same thing happens silver ag plus that is in aqueous and cl minus agcl will be formed so we are actually adding agcl even though we are told to uh, find out the what happens if ag plus is reacting we have to uh, you know make it into a white precipitate by the reaction with cl minus and agcl is taken and this reaction is proceeded and then you will be uh, you know uh, dissolving it in nh3 you can see that a uh, colorless precipitate is formed with while agcl is white precipitate and we put it inside of ammonia a complex will be formed and ag nh3 two times and cl will be formed which is a coordination compound and then a colorless coordination complex complex will be formed so these are the ways by which um, nitrogen i mean ammonia uh, acts as a complexing agent what is iodide of millions base this is of importance in the uh, detection of ammonia you will be studying it um, for the detection of confirmatory test for ammonia that is in the practical examinations you will be asked as to what is iodide of millions base okay now it is a test using nessler's reagent when nessler's reagent k2 hg i4 this is nessler's reagent uh, is rea in the presence of um, you know this salt containing ammonia ammonium salt plus koh what will happen is that iodide of millions base is formed that is nh2 hg o h g i will be formed so in between of two h g o is there and one h g is connected to nh2 and one h g is connected to i so this is called as iodide of millions base i hope you understood now this is a brown precipitate it is formed by the reaction of a salt of ammonia or ammonia with the it is a confirmation for ammonia isn't it so it along with it 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 will react the nessler's reagent in the presence of a base to form the iodide of millions base okay it's a brown precipitate and along with that ki and h2o is also formed so here i have shown you how the reaction proceeds and a precipitate being formed a brown precipitate is formed uh, during this reaction you can put it a brown precipitate that is being formed in this slide you can see that the uh, uses of ammonia is put okay we have come to the end of the session of ammonia uses of ammonia used to produce various nitrogenous fertilizers ammonium nitrate urea ammonium phosphate ammonium sulfate etc used in the manufacture of nitric acid that we will see how the nitric acid is prepared and then in that 
slide I will be telling you that ammonia is being used. Now liquid ammonia is used as a refrigerant. Okay, these are the uses of nitrogen if it is asked. Then one question we will deal with. NH3 from hy uh, form hydrogen bonds but PH3 does not explain. Okay, we have studied this uh, that ammonia will form hydrogen uh, bonds and that is why its boiling point and melting point is quite high we have studied. Okay, and the reason uh, we have told that it is due to the hydrogen bond formation. Now, why does NH3 form hydrogen bonds and PH3 does not form hydrogen bonding? Explain. Now, NH3 is a polar molecule. How does it become polar? Since there is electronegativity difference between nitrogen and hydrogen. You can see electronegativity of nitrogen is 3.01 and hydrogen is 2.2. So, there is a much, there is much difference between the two. So, as a result, what happens? The nitrogen is pulling its electron to itself. And hydrogen is without a, elect, uh, I mean, it is almost without electron. So, it has a positive and a negative end. So, that is a polar molecule is formed. And then, the nitrogen of one molecule associates with the, uh, of ammonia molecule, one ammonia molecule associate with the hydrogen of the adjacent um, uh, ammonia molecule to form a hydrogen bond. Understood? Now, here in pH3, you can see that it is a non polar molecule. Not much difference is there in electronegativity between phosphorus and hydrogen. See, phosphorus is 2.19, hydrogen is 2.2. Not much difference is there. So, the polarity is also very less. So, uh, pH3 is not a polar molecule. As a result, no hydrogen bonding is present in, for, in pH3, that is phosphine. And But in NH3, there is hydrogen bonding. <coughs> one more question pertaining to this a hydrox hydride of group 15 element dissolved in h2o to form a basic solution and this solution dissolves agcl precipitate name the hydride and write the chemical equation so from this re, uh, from this question um, you know this question is asked like this the question is asked like this and we can't make out that it is ammonia okay now this implication is here ammonia only uh, AgCl white uh, colored precipitate that will react to uh, NH3 mm, uh, and form a complex. Colorless complex is formed, isn't it? This is white and this is colorless. A hydride of group 15 dissolved in water means it is ammonia. It's basic in nature. Okay, why? Because it is able to donate this lone pair of electrons to Ag and form this particular complex. I hope you understood. Now, this is one question that usually comes, usually uh, comes from this section. Uh, I have put it in the question form itself. You have to write it in your notebook. So, all the notes you have to make, in spite of that, you have to write these questions in the, into your notebook. Uh, now, write the reaction of thermal decomposition of sodium azide. This one, this is the solution is also given to you. Now, why is nitrogen less reactive at room temperature? That answer also I have told you. You have to find out and write from the uh, slides therein. Okay. Then, you can see it here. Why does NH3 act as a Lewy base? Nitrogen atom in NH3 has one lone pair of electrons which is available for donation. Therefore, it is acting as a Lewy base. Mention the conditions required to maximize the yield of ammonia. We have studied its Haber process. You have to write all the conditions that are required according to Lee-Shatley's principle to maximize the yield of ammonia. How does ammonia react to the solution of Cu2 plus? You have seen that. That also you have to write in your notebook and keep. Uh, so, all these homeworks, you have to do it and go through the slides very carefully. And if there is any doubt, you have to ask me by personal message. So, thanks a lot, dear children, for your cooperation. Uh, we have uh, come to the end of this session. Uh, now, we will be dealing with the oxides of nitrogen in the next session and also the oxy acid, that is high, uh, nitric acid. Uh, thank you, uh, one and all, uh, for your patient hearing and understanding of the concepts. Thanks a lot.